I hate breaking a new man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. See, I, I, every time I start these things, I go, hey. Like I'm talking to Doug out here off camera. Hey. It's not hey. Welcome. Welcome to the Welcome. continuing winemaker series of the Wine of the Month Club. And very pleased and honored to have Antonio. See, I have to check now. Masanita. Masanita. <laughs> uh, Masanita from... Uh, Fita Preta Winery in Portugal, but which is kind of exciting. I was reading your bio online, mm -hmm. and we can you can all check that out. But I was very intrigued with your winemaking history, mm -hmm. which includes a little stint at Chateau Lynch Bage, which of course is one of the yep. great classified gross of uh, Bordeaux. Tell us about that a little bit. That was great because after the experience in Darnberg in, in Australia, I met this winemaker that had worked at Pichon Longueville. Mm -hmm. And I was a rugby player, and I managed to get a deal with Pai Medoc Rugby. So I went wow. to play for a rugby team, and they would give me a place in, in uh, Lingebage. The consultant winemaker is Daniel Dios. It's a very known, well, in the past, he played a lot of rugby, so that's yeah. how I got in. And then after, it was just a beautiful experience of how to do. That's unreal. How so isn't, isn't rugby just kill the man with the ball? Isn't that what it is? Right? You get exactly. the ball and you can tackle. <laughs> Roughly. We used to play that, yeah. <laughs> and so at Lynch Bosch, you also said you spent some time in Napa Valley. Yeah, so I did 2001, 2018 in Napa Valley. So I did Maryville Vineyards and Red Estate in Oakville. So uh -huh. that was just, uh, uh, first worked with Steve Test, that is just an insane winemaker. And then Charles Thomas, that is, well, uh, I think the, 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 the person that has taught me the most, uh, that is now in Quintessa. Uh, and so why did you decide whenever that you wanted to be a winemaker? You were a rugby player, you wanted to be a winemaker. <laughs> well, Portugal, 20% of the, uh, the population is in some way uh, involved with, with the wine industry. So it's not very hard to get into no, right, the yes. wine industry. Well, family has always been, uh, and, and my cousin's side has been, in, so we did harvest when we were young. But I think it was more to do well. My father is a chemist and he does research oh, yeah. on anthocyanins, so the, 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 comp the compounds that give color to wine. Uh -huh. So I've always been driven for science, met a viticulture teacher that is a bit of the guru uh, uh, in Portugal, right. and um, just started heading this it. way. Uh, so. My father was a chemist too. Oh, yeah? <laughs> and he got into pharmacy and then he thought wine was more interesting than drugs, so, or alcohol was better than drugs, so that's what he decided to do. <laughs> You know, we tasted some gorgeous wines just now, and I had to pick four so we could get, get, get them on film, but I, I just, it just hit me when you were talking that we don't have, like, Vino Verdes here. So some of the nope. classical wines that Portuguese make, you departed from that. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Though you use a lot so, of indigenous grapes, which we'll talk about. But. Uh -huh. So this is, it's, it's, it's been interesting to present this region, Alentejo, because inland is our biggest brand, so mm -hmm. to speak. It's your Napa Valley, right. meaning everyone can relate to Alentejo in Portugal. People will choose Alentejo before choosing white or red. Ah, interesting, yes. So for us, it's our local, uh, uh, um, well, most on the market uh, uh, right. brand, if you can call it, appellation. Right. And well, uh, so it's... So where's Vino Verde? Is not from that area? No, Vino Verde is north of the north, country. Yes. And it's, it's different style, so just lighter Wait, alcohol, just right. a bit spritzy, right. fresh acidity. Well, this was really fun, though we're on a different vintage now. We're doing a taste of 2008, but this is the, the sexy brand. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm, <laughs> hey, the, the, let the wine speak for itself, right? <laughs> it's got a gorgeous color in it, and uh, there were some um, indigenous white grapes in here with a little vignette at the tail end. But yeah. tell us about the two grapes that make up this wine. Okay, so uh, here the logic with the sexy. Well, sexy for me, it's a, an appealing, yummy wine. So that's, mm -hmm. that's the, where it came from. I'll buy that. Uh, okay. And uh, so the two varieties, the two main varieties are Anton Vaz. It's just a local grape variety from the region. And, and Ropeiro. Anton Vaz is, well, the base of most of the, the, the big whites of the region. It's, uh, I, it's not very appealing names that I'm going to say, but it's, well, it's citrus, but there's a lot of, uh, like, white vegetable yes, character to it. I like a little white peach, even. There, there is some wonderful body. The balance is excellent, but there's a lot of weight in the wine. I and it's very used on oaked white, so it's, it normally has a lot of texture, the, mm -hmm. the, Ropa, the, the Anton Vache. And Ropeiro is just more like a peachy pear uh, mm -hmm. uh, variety. It's gorgeous wine. Oh. Thank you. And Viognier, well, the Viognier is just, again, just with sexy, it's a fusion we wanted. Like, right. if it's not Fiji cooking, it's fusion winemaking. So, just mixing a bit, 
well, just making it as, as special as possible, meaning a bit of national varieties with foreign varieties, and it brings it this lychee, uh, more floral character. Yeah, that's the lychee so I get. No, the Sebastian was saying off camera about another wine called, uh, what was it called? Which one? The bitch. So yeah, but there you go. So, so you're you floor stacking this with sexy bitch? bitch? Sexy bitch, sexy bitch. I'm sure that's a fly in the uh, I'm East not. Coast circles of America, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that the producer agrees with it. <laughs> yeah, just as a right? That's good. <laughs> well, it's gorgeous wine regardless. And I think you said it's doing well in Europe. Or are you doing well it's in Portugal? Doing very, it's doing very well. So we're and it's just coming to America now. Just arrived. Yeah, that's awesome. It's fun to be on the cutting edge, folks, with some of these wines that, that are coming to America. And, uh, uh, and these are all really wonderful wines. I had to pick four out of about a dozen wines we tasted. That, and I thought all of them were great, but I wanted to show different things that you guys uh, would appreciate and enjoy. So this is the carta, which means letter. We were testing my Spanish today when we were tasting, <laughs> all six years of it. But uh, I just found this very pleasant and very economic, very value-oriented. And I love the spicy nose that we got out of this. And this is mostly what? So this is mostly our flagship variety that is Turiga Nacional. So that's grown for centuries in the port uh, region. And, and it's what, what really gives that personality, that floral character uh, to wines. If I could say something almost that the industry won't like, but it's almost like if you always had a bit of yin in your red. Mm -hmm. right? So there's always a bit of a floral character to red it. Red floral character, I love it. And, and the rest is Aragonese, it's the same as Tempranillo mm -hmm. uh, in Spain. So. Uh, Great balance, wonderful density, nice mid palate, but I get a little spicy component too, which I really find intriguing. Mm -hmm. But Aragonese can can get that um, uh, black pepper yes, character black pepper, to it. Right. And there, is there an aging potential to this wine? It's got enough acid. It seems like it's going to develop a little bit. Uh, well, uh, it's always hard for me. Uh, 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 to go in that direction because that's not the goal for me. Right, yeah. uh, so that what I'm more worried with this wines is one that they're nice to drink. Yes. That they smell like Portugal. So, that's true. Uh, so I want it to be yummy and that it just smells like Portugal. So that's the, the, the main goals with this wine. If it'll age, I'm, I'm pretty sure it has good grapes inside and has a bit of tannins. It, although yeah. they're round, I'm pretty yeah. sure they will. No, it's interesting you said that because uh, grapes of Portugal smells like Portugal. You know, traditionally over the years that we've tasted wines and we've been doing it for 30 years, that would be an old world character. And this clearly is not an old world character. This is a very new yeah. world character. So when I say it smells like Portuguese, they need to be modern, so modern winemaking and modern viticulture, so trying to do things clean. So yes. this, that's so what you get, right? when you call what we always said, this is a bit like old world character, or it's uh, VA or it means bread. <laughs> Sometimes right. it means one of these two. That's right. <laughs> But in this case, it's just really that there, there's a specific varieties that are from our region, and you cannot fake that that's aroma. Right. So that's just you can point it out and say, well, this, this smells like Portugal to me. Right. Uh, so you get that. You definitely I really get that. You, you accomplished that goal, and that was excellent. <laughs> uh, another product line, the Palpite. Yep. And this is um, interesting. It's, I think it's got a Cabernet in it. Yep. And you put it in a burgundy bottle, which is kind of interesting too. But uh, it's Cabernet. How much per Cabernet? And, and, and it's so this is a fifty. Uh, um, don't know really it by heart, but I'd say fifty-five percent cab, mm -hmm. and um, thirty-five percent. Uh, no, twenty-five percent uh, Tempranillo Aragonese, and the rest Turiga Nacional. So, um, <laughs> just, this, folks, I just bought a case of this for my own cellar, okay? Because it's really good, and the Cabernet. It doesn't overpower it. If you've tasted it in the beginning, you get the Cabernet. But then the complexity in the middle just tells you there's other things going on in the wine. And you did a great job of balancing these varieties. Mm. Yeah. And it's actually an interesting variety in the region because it's, it's a hot climate um, area. Um, and um, the Cabernet gives it this freshness to it. There's some freshness in the mid palate, just a yeah, bit of acidity. Yep. Um, but I'm still retaining just, I think, the, the, the character of the other two varieties. Um, it's gorgeous. Um, Are you still playing rugby, by the way? <laughs> That's a question people ask a lot, and I always say, ah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm always, like try try that, I'm always trying to get back. All right, good, yes. Yeah, we, all, we always do that. 
Trying to, we're all trying to get our YouTube. Maybe, <laughs> wine, maybe wine will do that. You know, I don't know. And this is the flagship, uh, the premium brand. Yep. And it's called uh, Preta. Preta. So it's not something we do every year. So. Oh, I see. So it's uh, based on what? The grape quality? It's based on really two things. One, being on the standards of quality we want, and also just respecting what came from the past. So uh, 06, it was a not a great Turiga year. Mm -hmm. And so this is dominant Turiga. The profile is this. So we just uh, decided not to do it. Um, and so it's dominant to Riga, then it's Alicante Boucher, so it's uh, 50 to Riga, 35 Alicante Boucher, and a little bit, I call it salt and pepper, just a little bit of Cabernet, just to spice it, a bit of spiciness. Um, the, the depth, the complexity, and it keeps going, and the finish is just like long and long, and I get more character, I get spice, I'm getting fruit now, and blackberries. What a gorgeous wine. Mm. And look how easy it is. Look at this color. Really great. Well, so this, this two, two wines are coming here, but just to explain a bit mm -hmm. shortly the process, it's something that it's all hand-picked in 80 kilo boxes, comes to the winery, we have a sorting table, five people on each side. There's a rule, so there's zero pumps in these grapes. So one of the, the studies I did in Rudder State was gravity flow versus pump flow, mm -hmm. so I'm zero for pumps in skins, and so just uh, falls in the, the, the sorting table, goes to a, a conveyor belt, gets just popped. Really? So just, just enough pressure to pop it. Pop it, and then it goes with, with a, another um, conveyor belt inside the tank. So wow. no pumps, uh, all gravity. So how much juice, uh, after the free run, basically, um, how much more juice could a grape extract? Another 50%, or another 20%? Another well, it's, it's not about really the juice extracting. It's just not, you can, if you grind and shrimp, if, you, if I, I give an e example, is yes. if you had a month to do a coffee, right. you just put the coffee bins, and then you just taste it during your month and say, right, well, right. this is great extraction, it's perfect. Or you can just put it all, right. and you're out of control. So That's true. just trying to control it. So just, we just pop the juice out, so the juice is out of the skin. And, and, but the skin is not, it's intact. Right, yes. So it's just slowly extracting, and we can taste it and see where is it going? Do I leave it in skins? Do I take it out of skins? So that's a bit, a bit the concept is control. Very, uh, yeah. very interesting. Very interesting. Well, it's, it's evident in the quality of the wine. I think I'll a little more because it's really good. And it's a pleasure having you here, Antonio. Mm -hmm. so it, uh, I know you had a whirlwind trip. You came it's from Vegas on the way to San Francisco. You're going to stop at a Brazilian restaurant. Yeah. Huh? What else do you guys have? This, this is the kind of life we lead, right? Yes. <laughs> it's really tough. The sacrifice life we live. That's right. <laughs> Cheers. Thank I'm you. out of wine, sorry. <laughs>